Welcome to the OR Society's 2018 Blackett Lecture. Uh, my name is John Hopes. I'm the president of the OR Society, for those who don't know me, and I will be your host this afternoon. Uh, I know many of you have been to these events before and you know the format, but uh, for those who don't, um, the star of our bill tonight is Sir Alan Wilson, who will be up, he is our Blackett Lecturer, and he will be on probably in about half an hour and I will introduce him properly when we get to that point. Um, before that, there will be um, a series of awards to present, and we have our award winners sat at the front here, um, ready for that. Um, this is very much a celebration for us of OR, of the strength of OR, strength of OR as it is in 2018, um, and particularly in the UK. Uh, although we do have uh, international presence in the room and international presence amongst our award winners. And um, it's been a strong year for the OR Society and for OR in the UK. Uh, I won't go into all the highlights, but a couple of them I will mention. One is the launch of our Journal of Business Analytics this year, new journal. Uh, and the other was our Diamond Jubilee Conference, so our 60th conference. It's difficult to believe the history goes back that far, but... It was a great event at Lancaster. I know many of you were at that event, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as, as, much as I did. Um, it's also been yet another strong year for our awards, and um, we'll move into the awards ceremony now, seamlessly. Um, and um, as I say, it's been another strong year for awards, and in particular, I would say uh, a lot of the awards are very relevant and um, they, they, they relate to today's problems, which I think is, is good to see, as you'll see as we go through the presentations. Um, we have, uh, I think, six awards to give today, and we're going to start with really what are the most prestigious awards that the OR Society has to offer. Uh, and these two awards are the, the Beale Medal and the Companionship of the Society. And um, these uh, awards are, the, the, the winners of these awards are selected by our past president's committee. So I'd like to start by thanking them. And that's, uh, that committee is chaired by Ruth Kaufman, our immediate past president. Uh, and it also consists of our two vice presidents, Alan Robinson and uh, Sanya Petrovic. And um, I will move immediately into um, the Beale Medal. Now the Beale Medal is awarded in formal recognition of a sustained contribution by one person to operational research in the UK. And what I will do with these awards is I will announce the winner and then I will give you the citation uh, rather than keep you in the dark as I read the citation. I think that would be too much. Um, so this is for formal recognition. It says for sustained contribution. Now it's more really than just a lifetime achievement award because this is for people who have continued to achieve and contribute through many, many years. And in the case of our winner tonight, you know, this is going back through 45 years of really continuous achievement and contribution. And our winner for the Beale Medal in 2018 is Professor Russell Cheng. Now, I will say a few words about Russell before uh, presenting him with the award. Um, I think of Russell very much as Mr. Simulation. And I think many in the room probably share that view of Russell. He's played a major role in developing simulation uh, for both academic and industrial use. As I say, over 45 years, starting uh, back in 1973, following the completion of his PhD at the University of Bath. And he is still contributing today remaining active as the Emeritus Professor at the University of Southampton. Uh, Russell's main contributions in terms of his research work have been in computer generation of random variables, design and analysis of computer simulation experiments, estimation of non-standard problems, which features in his most recent book, Non-Standard Parametric Statistical Inference. That's a free advert for Russell. Um, Computer-generated imagery. And really, I think in the UK, his contribution has been across a number of different domains through his uh, academic leadership, through simulation societies, through journals, conferences, 
the PhD supervision and development and in practice as well. Uh, so for example, when the OR Society launched the simulation journal, Russell provided one of the invited papers for the inaugural issue and later supported the journal as a member of its editorial advisory board. Uh, he's also been a, a regular contributor to the UK's uh, simu simulation workshop conference series. Uh, so for example, at this year's conference, uh, which I attended, uh, Russell was one of the two um, keynote speakers. Um, he's also acted as a board member for Eurosim and the Federation of Simulation Societies of Europe. And, and he's been an international ambassador as well. So for example, at the annual winter simulation conference in the US, which attracts around 700 people each year, uh, Russell's been a regular attendee, and this year he'll be giving one of the titans of simulation talks. And Russell undoubtedly is a titan of simulation. That's an honor that's only given to the very top academics. Uh, Russell has worked continuously at universities since 1973, as I mentioned, including being full professor at the University of Kent and University of Southampton. Uh, he's the main contributor to the National Taught Centre in Operational Research Simulation course, which attracts about 50 to 80 PhD students um, once every two years. Uh, and outside academia, I mentioned practice, organisations that have benefited from Russell's expertise include ICI, British Gas, Maritime Dynamics, Shell, Ford, the World Health Organization, and DSTL, who I know are represented by a few people tonight, uh, where he's had a very long uh, relationship. So Russell's already been recognized internationally, being presented with Lifetime Professional Achievement Award by the Informs Simulation Society. Uh, and within the UK, he's a fellow of the Royal Statistical Society and the Institute of Mathematics and its applications. Um, he is widely recognized as a leading academic in the field of simulation, and most certainly the leading UK academic in the field of mathematical analysis of simulation models. He is a worthy winner of the Society's 2018 Beale Medal. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Oh, more, more photos. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next award is our Companion of OR in 2018. And this is given for sustained support and encouragement for the development of operational research and for outstanding service to the OR society and the wider OR community. And this year, again, I'll announce the winner, give the citation, and invite the winner to come up and receive their award. This year, the winner is Paul Harper, <laughs> Professor of Operations. Paul is uh, Professor of Operational Research at Cardiff University and Deputy Head of its School of Mathematics. Uh, his wide range of interests uh, range from data mining to st stochastic OR and simulation modelling, and very often with applications to healthcare, which is, I think, where most of us know his, his work. Um, he started his academic career as lecturer at the University of Southampton after obtaining his MSc and PhD there. Indeed, I believe he might have been Russell's PhD student. So se seamless connections here from our, uh, from our award uh, panel. Um, and, and in fact, while at Southampton, you also won one of our other awards that you'll be seeing a bit later, the Good Eve Award. And um, Paul then took a research uh, position uh, in operational research at Cardiff in 2007 and took over the role of head of the OR group in 2009. Um, he developed two new postgraduate OR courses with strong industry links specifically which were launched in 2010 and have been popular ever since. His research achievements are very impressive, as evidenced by the grants he's won from EPSRC and NIHR, and in particular his 80-plus publications 
and his many PhD students. Um, but it's not this is not research that just stays in the papers. It is research with real impact. Uh, he has twice won the Cardiff University Innovation and Impact Award and its award for innovation and enterprise. And in 2015, the team that he led alongside Jeff Griffiths uh, won the prestigious Times Higher Education Award for outstanding contribution to innovation and technology. And this was the work that led to a reduction in stroke mortality of 60% in Cardiff hospitals, which I think many of you will, have, will be familiar with. Um, his research influence has been recognised in his selection to be a REF 2021 sub-panel member for mathematical sciences representing OR, and also by his membership of the re review committee of the Bond Review of Knowledge Exchange in the Mathematical Sciences, and in addition, his elections as a fellow of the Learned Society of Wales. Um, he has also contributed extensively to the OR community, which is an important part of this, uh, this award. Uh, so from 20, 2005 to 2011, he chaired the OR Society's OR in Schools Task Force. Uh, he chaired the Society's Young OR Conference in 2003 and its annual conference in 2008. Uh, he was co-founder of MASHNET and the Cumberland Initiative, which promote the use of modelling and OR in healthcare. And he's founding editor-in-chief of our journal, Health Systems. And he's a member of our research panel. For the significance and impact of his research, his contributions to the visibility and influence of OR, and his support to the wider community, Paul is a worthy recipient of our Companion of OR Award. Paul Harper. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> Gotta be careful of that. <laughs> This is the, the wonderful prize. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. We we now come on to uh, three awards that uh, where the winners were selected by our awards panel, and I would like to start by thanking the awards panel, which is chaired by Richard Mapleston, who I know is here tonight somewhere. Uh, thank you, awards panel. Uh, and the first award that uh, they have made this year is our Good Eve Medal. And the Good Eve Medal is awarded for uh, the most outstanding contribution to the philosophy, theory, or practice of OR published in the Journal of the o OR Society. And the, uh, the winners tonight for the, uh, the paper, that Distress Among Disaster-Affected Populations Delay in Relief Provision are Agar Iqbal Ali and Guven Inja. And uh, <laughs> now I mentioned that the awards tonight are, are particularly relevant and topical, and I think this is this is no exception. Um, major disasters seem to be ever more common these days. And in that context, this is an, an important piece of work, looking at the issues of major disasters from the point of view of those who are impacted by them. Uh, in the paper, the authors characterize two levels of distress, termed criticality and destitution, with respect to the delay of provision of relief items. Delay in provision will lead to destitution for a tolerable number of days, beyond which it leads to criticality. They developed a mixed integer goal program that quantifies these two metrics with respect to the number of days without provision of each of a set of relief items. And the model determines the allocation of resources and the distribution of available relief items in a manner that minimizes criticality and destitution in affected population seg segments. Um, this is illustrated in their paper by use of a fictional catastrophic earthquake in a major city, which emphasizes, I think, the applicability and importance of this work. Um, so I would like uh, Aga and Guven to come up and receive their award. <laughs> okay, that's, your award. that's your medal. Thank you. And just the, so shall we? 
And sorry, let me do both. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. The next award is the Stafford Beer Medal for 2018, and this is awarded in recognition of the most outstanding contribution to the philosophy, theory, or practice of information systems, published in the European Journal of Information Systems. And the winners for that one for the paper examining the intended and unintended consequences of organizational privacy safeguards are Rachida Parks, um, Zhen Zhu, Chao Jian Xu and Paul Benjamin Lowry. Uh, we have one of those four attending tonight, uh, and that is Rachida. And um, let me first read out the, the citation, and then I'll ask Rachida not to come necessarily up to the stage. We might do it down here. Um, the authors address the highly significant challenge of organizational privacy breaches. Um, while many organizations have attempted to achieve pri privacy compliance through technical and human controls, those controls might have unintended consequences, such as impeding workflow. And the authors explore this tension in their work using grounded theory to investigate the consequences of enacting privacy safeguards in medical practices. And they present a new theoretical framework that explains the unintended consequences of privacy safeguards enactment and highlights an imbalance challenge that occurs when these unintended consequences outweigh the intended consequences of the privacy. The judges were impressed with the novel focus of the paper and its readability, and particularly liked the way the paper provided a valuable theoretical contribution to academic, academia and clear guidance to practitioners, exemplifying how the theory, practice divide, may be bridged. For these reasons, they commended the paper to the IS community and congratulate the authors on being selected for the award. So I, I should point out Rashida is on uh, crutches tonight, so I think we will make the presentation down here. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to? Can you sing that? Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Our next award is the Cook Medal for 2018, and this is awarded in recognition of the most outstanding contribution to the philosophy, theory, or practice of knowledge management, published in Knowledge Management Research and Practice. And the winners of this award for the paper <coughs> Knowledge Development and Advice Networks in Professional Organizations are Fausto Di Vincenzo, from D'Annunzio University and Daniela Maschia from the University of Bologna. Uh, and I think Fausto is here. Yeah. Hey, Fausto. Um, so, this uh, paper explores personal advice networks developed by a community of hospital physicians in Italy using a combination of social network analysis and regression models to document how the level of knowledge development and the extent to which knowledge is distributed. Uh, is related to the redundancy of their advice networks as well as to the different, different uh, professional groups that people belong to. The judges highlighted um, a research study that simultaneously presents specialist findings whilst producing conclusions of wider interest to general re readership. The results provide valuable input for the management of knowledge networks and contribute to both the theory and practice of knowledge management. And I would like to invite Fausto to receive his uh, award. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. <laughs> I think we're on to the last one. <laughs> um, but it's a slightly different one, this one. So this is the, uh, the President's Medal. Uh, and again, those of you who were at our conference this year will, will already know who the winner of the President's Medal is. Um, but we didn't make the award, we didn't present the award at the, at the conference. Um, this, this award, uh, as I say, it's slightly different because it's a competition. And uh, this year we had a strong entry for the President's Medal which is awarded for the best account of successful OR practice entered for the competition and presented at the OR Society's annual conference. So it's very much practical case study based. Uh, as I say, we had a strong entry and we in fact had a pre-selection before the conference to narrow it down to a short list of three, which all presented at the conference and then the, uh, the jury, chaired by me and assist, ably assisted by Alan Robinson and Sanya Petrovich, uh, then chose our winner. Um, and the, the, the winner of the President's Medal this year, and I should say that there are also two runners-up, who I will also be awarding uh, uh, certificates to. But the winner of the President's Medal this year for uh, the paper repurposing the radio spectrum, delivering on the promise of next generation mobile services, is a group of people who at the time were all working at the Smith Institute, and men, most of them still are. Uh, Robert Lees, Jakob Blavand, Claudius Centasso, Andre Bejan and Paul Munday. Um, I'll just say a few words about the, uh, the project for those who weren't at the conference and didn't see the presentation. Um, it's, this is a project that provided optimization and algorithmic support to a unique $19.8 billion two-way auction of part of the radio frequency spectrum in the United States. Um, you know, this impressed uh, the judges in, in a number of different ways. There were some very tough technical challenges to overcome to ensure that the optimizations were error free, would maximize the amount of spectrum that could be made available, and would run fast enough to meet the demands of the auction. If ever there was a project that had to get, the, get it right first time, this was the one, uh, and it did. Um, and the project actually shaped the industry that it was focused on for the next 10 years, involving 3,000 TV stations and 62 mobile operators. Uh, the complexity was significant, requiring technically innovative solutions. It was also of critical importance to the U.S. government, uh, generating $7 billion surplus for the U.S. Treasury. Um, it had an immovable and publicly announced end date. Um, you know, we all like working to, uh, to targets, but this was, <laughs> this was a tough one. Uh, requiring extremely effective and agile project management with continuous cooperative communication with the other contractors on the project. And it's for this combination of technical challenge, degree of innovation, scale of benefit delivered, and quality of project management that the judges uh, agreed that this OR support to a unique two-way auction was a worthy winner. So I'd like to welcome Robert and his team to, uh, to come and receive their award. Well done. And for the, uh, the runners-up, I, uh, I won't read the citation for the runners-up, just the, the summary of the, of the uh, project. Uh, as I say, we had two runners-up, two equal runners-up, um, and the, uh, the first one for... Uh, Transforming a National Institution, a case study uh, of ORBEX best practice and engineering expertise to improve the waterways of England and Wales. And I'd like to welcome uh, Ian Griffiths, James Anderson, Richard Wakeland, Sheena Wilson, 
Um, or at least those who are here. I think all of you are here, yes? Yeah, it's yours. Congratulations. And uh, are we? Uh, Sheena, there's yours. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, Richard. Thank you. Congratulations. And uh, James. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And finally, our second runner-up is um, for improving Sheffield's health with a public sector scorecard, Max Moulin and John Sodi. I think Max is here and John isn't. Um, so, Max, if you'd like to come up and get your award. It's over here. It's over here. Congratulations. It's your award. Well done. Okay. Great. Well done. Thank you very much.